Welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram. Walk in the Park is produced every week. Episode 144, recorded on August 3rd. It's a public access television in Ithaca, New York. Pegasus Studios, Channel 13. You can also see it online anytime at walkinthepark.tv, my video blog. So this one will be up very soon. As soon as we uh, get this one on TV, it'll probably be online. So you may want to check that out. Uh, i got lots of shows on there. Obviously, this is 144, so uh, we have more than 100 shows online there to watch. This week's theme is Waterless Waterfalls. The drought continues in the Finger Lakes. So if you've been up to Tacanic Falls Overlook lately, you've probably seen something that looked like this. Well, let's take a look at what it's supposed to look like when we go there. This is what people want to see. And this was three years ago in the middle of July, and it was really hot, but it was wet as well. So, uh, unfortunately, this is what our visitors and we ourselves who live in the area uh, have to enjoy. But um, So, let's take a look at this map here. This is a map of the drought, right? That star right in the middle is Tompkins County. Gigantic Falls, all that sort of thing. And uh, let's see, this is from the Ithaca Journal on August 1st. This is August 3rd. With Saturday's rain came cautious optimism among some residents in Ulysses, the town of Ulysses, that the long summer drought was coming to an end. That was short-lived. There has been such a shortage of rainfall this year as to preclude a day or two of rain doing much good. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration has determined Trumansburg, which is the uh, village near Tagantic Falls to be the driest spot in upstate New York. Whoa, so that orange area is the driest. I mean, yes, yeah, the driest area, the most severe, that's severe drought. And then you can imagine what the others are. There are lesser amounts, and even in the uh, central part of the state, that is not in a drought condition for some reason. So, um, but we are, and uh, we've had some rains. Um, during the week a little bit on Monday, this is Wednesday, on Monday we had about a quarter inch and to about almost four tenths of an inch of rain and a downpour that came across Ithaca, but um, it affected places differently. But let's go take a look at Tagantic Falls, uh, take a little video of Tagantic Falls and drought. We'll get right up close and comfortable. I miss my good camera. I've never seen the water level this yeah, low. Baby. It's a big one. I think that's just my good camera. Mm -hmm. And then the Aaron Island is a sunny fire season. Ooh! Yeah, it's on the other one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there. Okay, so um, the voices you heard there were people standing at the overlook. I was standing all around me as I was taking that video. I'm going to take a look at the Cayuga Lake watershed once again. We usually look at this every week one way or another. And uh, so the, all the area in green is the area that drains to Cayuga Lake. Uh, precipitation from rain, groundwater, springs, uh, snow, which of course not now. But uh, as the rain hits the various parts of the watershed, the different shades of green and gray and so forth, uh, those represent the sub-watersheds, the little streams um, or, or in sometimes bigger streams that feed Cayuga Lake and uh, they all drain there. So each of the lakes has their own watershed and obviously we're just highlighting Cayuga Lake's watershed. Now, we'll zoom in now towards Ithaca and look at some of the uh, sub-watersheds near Ithaca. So on the, um, well, we'll compare two. If you look on the right, you'll see a arrow, an arrow pointing towards one of the sub-watersheds, and it's sort of a 
leafy looking thing. That's the subwatershed of Fall Creek. That's the largest single uh, subwatershed, about 140 square miles within the Cayuga Lake watershed basin. Then you look on the left, there's another arrow, and that's pointing towards Taganic Creek. And you can see that the Fall Creek watershed is considerably bigger than the Taganic Creek watershed. So when rain hits these different watersheds, uh, the collection area for the, the rainfall, either that which runs off the uh, surface of the ground into the streams or goes into the groundwater and eventually comes out as springs, uh, varies quite a lot. So one stream like Ithaca Falls, this was, uh, when was this last week? Uh, when, when Taganic Falls looked uh, really dry like it did here, this was Ithaca Falls, and it still had substantial water on it because Ithaca Falls is in the Fall Creek watershed, and there's just a lot more water in the watershed. So, um, so anyway, on Monday, I was uh, driving across Ithaca, and I was going up towards Lansing and in the morning, and this incredible downpour came down. I mentioned earlier, it was oh, probably, oh, they said about 0.38 inches, but it depends where you were, of rain fell within an hour or less, and um, so I figured, wow, these, these uh, streams are going to uh, be affected by that. So I went up afterwards and, uh, to, into the village of Cayuga Heights to look at, just to take some pictures at uh, Sunset Park, which has a view over the city. So I'm going to show you a little video there just after the storm had passed. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself here. I wanted to show you a video of Ithaca Falls. So let's do that one instead. Whoops. Sorry for the uh, confusion here. I've got a lot of little videos to show today. So then I went up to Sun... Actually, that picture... Yeah, that was, uh, that was taken, what, last week before we had the rain that we've had, like, we had rain on Saturday, we had rain on, sun, on Monday. Um, so anyway, this, this video here I'm going to show you is just after the rain on Monday morning that dumped about a quarter to a third of an inch on us. So that didn't really show you a whole lot. It's just that it was cloudy and the rain had passed. And it's just a nice view over Ithaca, a pan across Ithaca. The sound that you heard was probably Route 13 down in the valley going through the city. So, um, so I wanted to uh, go see what happened to Ithaca Falls. This is before any of that rain. And, uh, but you can't during the day. The only time you can get into Ithaca Falls now because of construction is after 5 o'clock in the afternoon as the... Uh, uh, handwritten note is on this trail close sign uh, or on the weekend so I had gone in there in the afternoon to take this picture f after five o'clock one day last week uh, so I couldn't go in and see if there was any effect of that cloud burst on Ithaca Falls but I did go elsewhere so this little map is another watershed map showing a different sub watershed at the south end of Cuga Lake and right just right of center it says Cascadilla Creek and then above that is Fall Creek. And Fall Creek is the watershed of Ithaca Falls. And Cascadilla Creek is 
Well, that's the watershed of Cascadilla Creek. Not a very big area. It goes up to Mount Pleasant, east of Cornell, and that's pretty much it. So uh, then below that is Six Mile Creek and uh, Buttermilk Creek. We'll be talking about those in a moment. So I, um, I went down to Cascadilla Creek, and uh, it was different from this picture. This is a picture I took sometime last month when it was really dry. And uh, let's take a look at it, what it was Monday morning after the cloud burst. So Cascadilla Creek hasn't looked like that in months. So uh, that was, that was kind of nice to see. But let's take a look at this watershed map again. The storm was local and it passed across passed across um, Cascadilla Creek's watershed, Fall maybe Fall yeah had to be Fall Creek's watershed and other watersheds in the area, sub watersheds. But it didn't go much farther south than that. So we're going to take a look at some of the other spots here that. Um, the storm might have hit. So I went on down. Then after that that uh, uh, video I just showed you that I took on Monday after the storm, I went down to Buttermilk Falls State Park and said, well, maybe Buttermilk Falls as a, um, actually, let's take a look at this map here. Take a look at Buttermilk Creek's watershed, just, just below center there. That's not a very big watershed either. Um, but did it get rain? And this is what it looked like. There was no visible impact of the rain on Buttermilk Falls. So this is a very local storm and these watersheds uh, respond differently to storms. So one watershed might get several inches of rain and another one wouldn't. And you get different like flooding and so forth uh, will vary among the places. I don't know what Taganic might have gotten Monday morning. But um, the um, I was told that uh, I was wondering whether the water had uh, flooded um, Enfield Creek in Robert Treeman State Park and interfered with the swimming there. The swimming at Buttermilk Falls uh, was not open during the week, although it is on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, probably because of the uh, availability of lifeguards. But in any case, Robert Treeman State Park, this, I didn't take this this year, but it probably looks something like this now. Uh, they were open that day, because usually if you get a cloud burst like that and water roaring down into it, it will bring a lot of silt and sediment and so forth. and Water clarity and water quality uh, would require it, the uh, swimming area to be closed for a day at least so it can clear up and be uh, safe for, well, water safety for um, uh, hygiene and also for the ability of lifeguards to be able to see people in the water. So, uh, but it was open. It was open Monday, so apparently not hit by that storm. So, once again, this is Walk in the Park. Walk, you can see all the shows at walkinthepark.tv. It's on channel 13 as well. Uh, well, that is really what it is, a public access television. Channel 13, first showing Thursday night at 9 p.m., then on Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m., and then on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. So in Ithaca, New York, the area is served by Time Warner Cable. All right, so let's go back to our watershed. A different, yeah, this is the, one of the original maps there. We're going to look at Six Mile Creek Watershed. Now, this one is pretty important because it is the water supply of the city of Ithaca. So, um, did it get any input at all from that storm? So, that was a question I had. So, here's an um, aerial photo by Bill Hecht showing Six Mile Creek as it goes out of the city. And the most of that section of the watershed, anyway, uh, what you can see here, is owned by the city of Ithaca, both within the city and within the town of Ithaca. Um, the little lake that's just right of center, that's called the, well, it's had different names. It's been the Lower Reservoir, it's been 30-foot dam, second dam. Uh, it's a place where a lot of people like to go and s swim and cliff jump, and it, that's illegal and dangerous, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole 
subject in its own. And then the upper upper one to the upper right there, that's actually the city watershed. Um, and that's a 60-foot dam, it's called. That's what it looks like, actually. And we'll zoom in on that. This is obviously a Google Earth picture. Looking down on the two uh, reservoirs, the um, Ithaca Reservoir, it says there in the center, and then the upper left is the the second dam, which was originally built to be city reservoir, but quickly found that, well, 100 years ago or so, quickly determined to be inadequate. So they built the higher dam, and um, it uh, now has enough water. So there's about a 30 days. I called um, Roxy Johnston, who is the uh, city of Ithaca watershed coordinator for the, the city waterworks, um, and she said that when there's water coming over the dam, uh, that means you know, that's good. That means that we have enough water. But if the water stops coming over the dam as it has lately, uh, then you say we've got, then they say we've got a 30-day supply of water unless we get some rain. So uh, what was happening with that? So I uh, look at that watershed. Now, about halfway through the, well, from, a, from the left, down in there, there's a, there's a road. It isn't shown here called German Cross Road. And there's a um, water gauge, a water uh, measurement station there. And here is some data showing um, what's been going on lately with our water in Six Mile Creek watershed and therefore our water supply. So you can see there's been some variation. This is just for the last week up until this morning um, that shows um, the, the squiggly line. That is the, the amount of flow that's been coming through the station there, the discharge, measured discharge, whatever. And then you see those little triangles and those represent a 21-year median daily statistic. So this is about the average flow over a 21-year period for these dates. So you can see up until August 1st, which was Monday, uh, we were below that level. It had been for some time, and I'll show you that in a picture. Let's go. Let's look at another picture here. This is, um, this is going back to April. And notice that in May, from May right up until the present, we've been below the, um, the average amount for the dates. So uh, we, this is representing our, our uh, drought conditions, and that's the, what reservoir has gotten, gotten uh, well, I wouldn't say it's gotten drained, but it's, it's uh, get to a critical situation where they're talking about, we only got 30 days of water left, but they always only have 30 days of water. It's just as it being replenished. So the rain that we had on Monday gave a spike and uh, so it was above the average amount. So uh, water probably was, I think, was coming over the dam then. So we're, um, we're all right for a couple of days, but now it's dropped down below again. So it's not enough to make a big difference. So this, again, is over the last few months since April. And um, it's actually getting a little bit better. So, so watershed, that's pretty important. And uh, so the city is asking people to conserve water and be careful, um, you know, use gray water for watering your plants or that sort of thing. Um, until we get out of this drought, we need to be careful with the water. Some of the people with wells, of course, around here, their wells have gone dry. They have to truck water in. Farmers are having a rough time. They can't irrigate. Um, so it's tough. So now we're going to look at a, a Finger Lakes Land Trust um, project to um, protect some of the Six Mile Creek watershed. Uh, Six Mile Creek, an amazing chance to protect Six Mile Creek. Beautiful in all seasons, treasured for recreation, and vital as a source of drinking water for thousands who live and work in the city of Ithaca together. We can protect it forever. So uh, they have a campaign, and they got some more to narrative to read on that. Let's see if I can bring that up in my sequence here. Let's go. Oh, coming right up. Here we go. This summer we are acting on a rare chance to buy land that buffers 12,000 feet of shoreline along Six Mile Creek and its tributaries upstream from Ithaca. So they have a nice little uh, video they've put together um, that um, uh, shows you Six Mile Creek and tells you a little bit about the program. So we'll look at that.
Okay. Uh, so thank you to Finger Lakes Land Trust for letting us uh, use your video here. Um, I'm going to look at, uh, here's another photograph. I don't know exactly where this is in the watershed, but the Six Mile Creek watershed is pretty um, uh, branched out. Here is a map they have on their website showing areas that are protected of the watershed. And I don't know exactly where the 12,000 feet of shoreline is, but um, it's going to be in some area that's not protected yet. But uh, the, in the middle is the Roy H. Park Nature Preserve, a land trust preserve, and then some Cornell lands, state lands, and some newly acquired land there. You can see a lot more on their website. Here's the state of their campaign as, the, as, a, as of June 19th. That's right, folks. The, they're trying to raise $300,000. That's right, folks. The glass is more than half full. In fact, it's 79% full in the middle of June. We still have to complete the purchase and conserve it forever. Together, we will save this amazing place. So they're asking for donations to save this section of the Six Mile Creek's shoreline to protect the integrity of the, of the watershed. And it's also a beautiful natural area. So once again, this is Walk in the Park. You can see all our episodes. See it online at walkinthepark.tv as well as channel 13. In Ithaca, this is public access television, which is pr principal means of distribution. Going to go to another Finger Lakes Land Trust Preserve. This one is called the Hinchcliffe Family Preserve, which is on Skinny Atlas Lake. So Skinny Atlas Lake, where's that? Well, where we are in Ithaca, two lakes over to the northeast um, is Skinny Atlas Lake to the right of Auburn. You can see that balloon there with the star on it. In the southern end of the lake there are uh, two or three um, Finger Lakes Land Trust Preserves, and this is one they are featuring now that uh, I guess has been recently recently consolidated. So we're going to take a look at a little video of just some uh, just some scenics of the preserve. Let me see if I, if I have some. I might actually have some more information here. I'm done. Oh yeah, the 206 acre Hin Hinchcliffe ugh, Family Preserve peers over the eastern shore of Skinny Atlas Lake, offering impressive vistas, diverse habitats, and a unique window onto the human history and changing natural landscape of the property. All right. The Hinch Hinchcliffe Family Preserve is a key part of a growing green belt of preserved land around the southern end of Skinny Atlas Lake. Land protection here and throughout the watershed is vitally important because the lake serves as a source of drinking water for the city of Syracuse and several other communities. So let's go take a look at that video. Okay, thanks again to the Finger Lakes Land Trust for that. We're running down on time here, but I want to share you some, uh, just a few other pictures here. We're going to hop over to Watkins Glen at the southern end of Seneca Lake to our west, uh, Watkins Glen State Park. And look at this. This is Rainbow Falls and Triple Cascade. Now, this picture was done by Michael Fraser of Captured Moments Photography, and he was kind enough to share it with me. Uh, so look at this scene here. There's no hardly any water in the gorge. This is what it looked like uh, a few years ago when I took this picture. And then when it's had a cloudburst, 
it looks like this. So uh, we're not kind of getting uh, the water over there. Watkins Glen is very dry. Uh, this one is, I thought I had a credit for this photograph, but I don't. Kirsty, somebody. Uh, okay, well, maybe this is it. Um, yeah. Okay, there's another one. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. That's, a, that's sort of a floody picture there. Anyway, so there you go. Compare that with, say, that or that. Those are high water situations, and this is somewhat high water, too. That's really not the sort of normal kind of flow that you see here, but this is certainly not normal. I've never seen it that low. I haven't gotten over there lately. So thanks to Captured Moments Photography, Michael Fraser, for that, those pictures. A couple more. Cavern Cascade. Uh, hardly any water in it. This is one of the ones you can walk behind. There it is when it's sort of normal flow. Entrance Cascade, hardly anything in it. There it is in normal flow. So this is the top looking down on what's called Central Cascade, hardly any water. This is normal. So, um, okay, so we got to uh, wrap it up here, We're running out of time. So thank you very much for joining me. I will uh, end off here with a nice uh, sunset picture as we get uh, ready for the um, final goodbye video.